day as I prayed about what possibly does God want to say to his people? And the word was charge. So I'm going to pray and then just say a couple words about this charge. Charge, charge, charge. Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you, God, that I'm always charged. I'm supercharged. I'm magnified charged. But sometimes, Father, there are charges that are leveled against us as your elect. And I pray that this word will ignite your people to actually understand if God be for us, who cares who's against us. Father, cover this line and cover the speaker and everything associated with it under the blood of Jesus. We love, honor, and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. So as I said, charge is about a demand. When, when God calls you and he, he gives you a charge, when I was set in office, uh, they gave us a charge to do whatever it is that we're going to do. And when uh, you have a charge, it's going to be a demand. It's going to be a weight put on the call that's on your life. And so the second definition for charge is as accusation. So part of that call on your life, the, the accuser, the brethren is going to come after you and, and make some charges against you and working in your mind to make you think you're crazy, make you think you're not called and, and forget the demand that God put on you. Because the demand that the enemy's putting on you is stronger now. It's making you want to run and what, make, make you want to back up. There's, there's a, the charge out there right now. With I, I'm up here in Washington, and it's smoky out here, and we're in a pandemic. I mean, it's just crazy charges that are coming. Like, God, are you really still here? And the enemy's like, he's not really here. He's not really in control. Charges. We're talking about charges. A charge is in trust. God wants to entrust us with some stuff. He wants to entrust you with some gifts. He wants to entrust you. Why? Because there's going to be a demand on the gift. And, and charge means to store up. It's like electricity. It's like, uh, okay, for me, it's like fire shut up in my bones. But it gets a little bit more than that because God is also a consuming fire. So it's not only just like shut up in my bones, poof, I just blow up. But <laughs> charge, what are you charged to do? What are you charged to do in this world, in this pandemic? How can you be effective? How can you be a charge in somebody's life? How can you ignite someone else in this time of, of sorrow, this time of depression, this time of being down? How can you be that charge and put a demand on the anointing that God has placed in you so that you can ignite some stuff? You know, if, if you really have a fire, then there should be something burning around you. <laughs> What's burning? Is the word burning in you? It says in Romans 8, 33, who then would dare to accuse those whom God has chosen? Who dare? Who dare would, who dare would accuse you in his love? God has chosen us in his love. And since he's chosen us, we can triumph. In this portion of text in Romans 8, it comes after Romans 7 where, where it talks about being this battle in the flesh that the things that I want to do, I don't want to do, but I find myself doing the very thing I don't want to do. And so when you have this demand on your life, when you have a charge on your life, you have to understand that God has you right where you need to be. How dare the enemy say that you can't do it? How, how dare someone in authority over you who, who's trying to keep you in a box tell you what you can't do? If, if God says you can do it and you're chosen, that means he's given you a charge. He, he wants a demand put on the gift so you will step up and walk in the gift. Is it going to be hard? Yes. But like, who, who wants to go to a weight room and uh, like lift five pounds unless maybe you just got, got out of surgery? Some of you have been in surgery for 20 years and y'all still lifting 20 pounds. Still trying to figure out if you're saved. <laughs> You've been in the church 20 years and you're still struggling with your salvation. God has charged you with something. Go ye therefore. If you don't know what your charge is, you might not be called as an apostle. All right, great. But you've been called. And what the call is a charge. And with the charge is God's love to do what? Have you triumph. You can triumph over your enemies. It says in, in 91, Psalms 91, I think around in verse uh, 11, it says that God will 
but uh, angels will be charged over you so nothing can hurt you. So even though you are accused, there's a charge of angels that have been released to protect you in the fire, to protect you in the storm, to protect you when everyone says you can't do it. Because if God has charged you, he, he will put everything in you that you need to get it done. So if he wants you to understand charge tonight, what's the demand that God's placing on you? What is the enemy saying against you? What has God entrusted in you? And what is stored up that needs to flow out of you? You have been charged by God. The question is, are you going to be obedient to the charge or obedient to the accuser of the brethren? You see, it's always a choice. God isn't going to force you to do what he's called you to do. And so you have a, a choice to back out and be scared, or you can do it in fear and believe that God's angels, he has a charge over you. He has an anointing over you. He has a purpose over you. He's got a fire over you. God loves you so much. Do you know all the stuff you went through? All, all the stuff that people have disqualified you for? Do you actually understand that was your training ground to go back into the fire? Because now you've actually seen what it means to be burned, to go get someone else. You are charged to make a difference in that area. The question is, are you going to be the, the match to start the fire in someone's life? Will you bring hope to the hopeless? Will you be love to an un unlovable person? Will you be reason? in a time of unreasoning? Will you be justice in a time of injustice? Will you be righteous in a time of unrighteousness? You have a charge. The body of Christ is charged to seek and save the lost and to love unconditionally. This is the charge today. Will you love and will you go forward in the charge of God? I pray I gave you something to think about uh, in this little short brief time i'm going to charge you to go forward in god i'm going to charge you i, I want to put a demand on the gift god i put a demand on every gift that's out there everyone who's in a box i break the box right now in the name of jesus everyone who's confined i say break the box right now god you are the fire you are the fire that can blow up the box so i pray where people are stuck in the time of pandemic that they find new ways to reach people that they find new ways to to glorify glorify you. I pray, Lord God, as they walk in the store with a mask on, that they would take their mask off and just say hi, that they would kind of go next to somebody. And because the fire of God is in them so much that maybe, maybe something will erupt out of them and, and the store will go crazy simply because you pray for somebody to get healed in that store that you're not supposed to touch anybody. You're going to allow Jesus to touch them. I pray, Lord God, that the charge of the church will go do what the church does. Take it by force. I thank you, Lord God, for what you're doing. I thank you for empowering us right now because, God, there are so many weapons that have formed against your people in this season, but you have already declared that it will not prosper. I pray a demand. This pandemic is putting a demand on the gifts, and I pray that we Rise up, rise up, and do what God has commanded us to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Pray you have a good day. We'll see you when we see you. <laughs> Bye.